All right, everyone, pitch back here from the dungeon. I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, today I'm going to be drawing some something scary. I decided I wanted to show off, you know, uh, my thought process when I'm doing something really horrific. Um, so let's get into it. I feel like I don't see a lot of videos on YouTube about this, so let's get it together. I'm thinking of something um, kind of in the realm of this piece right here, um, where it's a little bit more chaotic and um, abstract. So yeah, let's get into it. So we're going to start with my favorite size, which is 2160 by 2700. And um, I'm thinking just like maybe a face, uh, perhaps something blacked out and uh, kind of like oozing. I don't really know yet. Let's just kind of have fun with it. And so I'm going to start off with maybe like a figure. Um, let's do something like this. I had a, a really scary dream recently um, where someone's face was kind of melting off. And so I kind of want to um, explore that. I've explored this concept before. But I'd like to do it again. I love the idea of just like a hole where the face is. And I feel like I haven't quite mastered it yet. Um, so let's see what we can get through here. We got, the, we got the general shape of the head, right? We got the trapezius down over here. So that's like the, the back muscles, basically. I love that kind of like hunched over feeling. And then let's see what we can do. Maybe we just add the shoulders are a little more rounded, right? It's fun. And then we have to have the collarbones. You know, when I was a uh, when I was younger, I had a math teacher, and he was really into boxing, and he was talking about the clavicles. I actually didn't draw clavicles on this character, and he's like, you know, you need to make sure you draw the clavicles so they can give them shiver shots. And I guess what shiver shots are is when you, uh, I guess in boxing, it's when you like use your forearm to break someone's clavicles. So I've always remembered that. It's just something I think of now whenever I draw clavicles. Um, yeah. So thanks for that. And. Yeah, so I, I remember that now. It's crazy what you remember as you get older. Um, but yeah, here you go. That's that. So this is kind of cool. This is a decent place to start for the most part. Um, for this piece, I'm feeling kind of a extremely aggressive vibe. Um, and so I think the background is going to be red. Yeah. And so we'll make the actual character itself maybe like a white. I do think this is kind of like an important step to define early. Because I do like when a character's I think the background rather it just like defines a lot of how a piece feels um, I tend to use black backgrounds for things that are a little bit more eerie red, red backgrounds for things that are a little bit more aggressive and white backgrounds for things that kind of want to be like stunning um, I, I really only use these three colors so that's very you know important for me to define early on in the piece so it does change up though you know, honestly so look at already we have something kind of going on here we have this kind of you know figure a face I do think I have too much white going on here and not enough going on up over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to merge these layers together. Because I think I'm going to just stick with this idea. And I want to make the whole piece bigger. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just actually just going to grab this. Make it bigger down here. Or I can make it smaller. There's two ways we can go about this. I can either make this a lot bigger and focus more on the face and the head. Or I could make it a lot smaller and focus on more of the body. Or we could go down here. And I could focus on creating like some kind of something over there. Let's try. I do truly feel like this was kind of like the sweet spot I was looking for. I want a little bit less chest. Maybe we'll round out the shoulders a little bit more. Yeah, that feels right. And that way I can add a little bit more up here as well. Maybe like something to do with negative thoughts. Um, yeah, look at that. We'll erase some of the shoulders and kind of add, blank that out. Now I do use... A lot of these sketching lines and things like that, but I tend to erase them because um, it almost gives an effect. Something about outlines, um, they're good in certain areas, but I find that you can get a more realistic effect if you erase them and you add just like, you know, let the white stick to what it's doing. Um, okay, now that we have something here, this is kind of unsettling. We have the, I also, in my mind's eye, check like the rule of thirds a lot of the time. So one, two, this is kind of sitting right there. Maybe we can. Now, this is not bad, but we could definitely probably move one, one, this over here. That'd be perfectly centered, or just about, you know what I mean, roughly. Um, I do kind of like it a little bit lower, though, honestly. It has this weird unsettling effect where it's just off base. So we'll keep that right there. We'll get rid of this. Um, let's see. A lot of this is just kind of messing around until I get the right thing for the most part. So let's just try and start messing with the face, right? And so I want to make this guy really messed up. I want to have something really frightening uh, like for this hole. It's kind of void, right? Um, so first off, let's maybe start a new layer. And you know what I'll do? I'll actually copy this layer because I use this brush called Turpentine. 
and the turpentine brush is really great, but it's most effective when, I think I'll just show you actually. So there's a layer right here, right? And so when I use turpentine on it, it actually affects the stuff I've already painted and it moves it around quite a bit. It's nice, I would actually really like that. Um, but let's, let's say I remove it, right? And I just do the layer above this. As you can see, it's not interacting so much with the previous drawing. I don't get that really cool smudging effect that I'm looking for. So here you can kind of see the difference here. Yeah, look, it's a beautiful void now. And I'm, I'm, I just want to work with this and kind of meld it. Um, both have their um, purpose, but I think for this, I'm going to start working away at this. And kind of just slowly but surely creating this kind of like shadowed area. I don't know how else to put it. But yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I also need to add some, you know, I'm gonna use my brush. Let's try Banshee. There's one I made personally. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of black down over here because I do like that shadow. So let's assume the light source, right? And this is a lot of stuff I do with my head normally, but I'll just show you guys what my thought process is. So the light source is gonna be coming from here, going down, and um, in theory, it would be closer towards me. So the light would be heading like this direction. So we wanna make sure that this is all shadow. And I'm not the best with shadows and stuff like that, but I do try and make an effort to create um, a sort of a vibe with it. And you know what, actually, it doesn't look quite right because this is, I wanna keep this light area for the most part. So maybe we'll have the shadow coming from behind almost, right? Yeah, I guess from behind would make a lot more sense. So we'll do this over here. There's a, technically like, a, like a, a tendon in the neck on both sides here. So we'll put that over here. And a lot of these sketches I'm doing right now, you know, it's one of those things where um, it doesn't matter that they're not, you know, this is going to remain here. You know, I, I do think that leaving these little sketches are nice. Um, I think it adds a lot of texture to my pieces. Um, does this guy need ears? Let's, let's give him some ears. Let's see how it looks. It's all right. Let's see. We'll put this over here. Put that there. Nice. It's not terrible. It's not bad. I think we're going to add some more black on this side, though, because it just would make more sense to have the side in the shadows, honestly. There you go. Beautiful. Yeah, all right. And then we'll put, so there'll be a little bit of shadow in the clavicle here as well. Maybe a little bit more shadow on this side. Um, we want maybe some, some viscera coming out of the face as well. So it's not a big deal that we make this all black or we do whatever. Um, let's go back to turpentine and we'll actually make it a lot more translucent so it's not quite as powerful. Um, I do think this ear sticks out a little bit too much, so we're gonna actually lighten that up a little bit and just like take away from it. There you go, that's kind of nice. Um, I'll also just kind of start roughing up these edges around here. We'll make it bigger, there's that. And see, I'm falling into this problem again where it's not blending properly because it's on the layer above it. So we'll just go to this layer underneath it. Boom, there we go. Now we're in a little more of an effective situation right now. Um, already kind of fun, kind of cool. Um, we're definitely getting some depth of character here. Um, I do want to add this kind of like blood effect though. Um, so look at that. We'll add this little bit of red in here. That's kind of nice. And again, this is one of those things where like the more I'm doing it, the more it's going to come together for the most part. And look at that. That's beautiful. We got this nice, oh, see these like these little brush strokes like that are just so powerful to me. Um, I really like it. You can also like add or remove. So there's no, again, no real rules here. I'm just trying to make it scary. I'm, I'm thinking to myself too, like what are things that are unsettling as I'm doing this, right? Like, like what is, um, what makes people uncomfortable? Um, obviously, you know, uh, viscera and things like that, but also, um, dark spaces, you know, that's something to think about when doing something really scary. Um, like people don't like holes. People don't like to reach their hands into holes. People don't like to look at dark places. Um, in the earth or things like that. And so what this is is just kind of a continuation of that fear. I like to think of things that would scare me or make me feel uncomfortable. I don't like shadowed figures. So I'm just adding more and more shadows to this figure as I go along thinking, you know, what well, is this something I would like to see? Um, and usually the answer is no. I definitely don't, like, these aren't like my fantasy, like dream creatures. This is like something I would hate to run into. And I don't know what started this trend for me personally of drawing things like that, but it's definitely... Um, inspired a lot of my work here we go so now it's starting to come to life starting to become real it's got a got an abstract quality which i like to i um a lot of people since i drew a piece called wrath a lot of people suggested an artist called francis bacon to me 
who I was not familiar with before. And I actually love his style. And I can see where people drew the comparison from. And so I've actually been, I looked at a catalog of their work and I was really impressed. And so, um, yeah, that's where I'm at with, uh, I'm looking at more abstract artists and things like that. I'm just trying to grow. I mean, I think a good part of being an artist is to um, learn how to, you know, uh, take work from others and not emulate the style, but like take parts of it that you think are strong and be like, oh, I want to add this to my own body of work. I want to like do something similar to this or what have you. Um, this is looking quite nice, so I'm actually really happy with how this is coming out. Um, and now something I thought too that might be cool might be to add. Oh, Jesus, that's quite good. That's quite good. <laughs> that's awesome. Now that's such a great part of the process is when you do something, you're like, oh, dude, that's it. That's the that's the move. Just a simple little thing. I don't even want to touch that. That came out so nice. Um, oh, it's so creepy. I love that. Oh my god. And just adding little things. Mm, all right, yeah, rock solid, dude. That's so nice. Oh my god. Um, I get so excited. It gives me goosebumps when a piece starts coming out the way I want it to come out. When I when you don't even know, you know, this is a lot of this process is just kind of like. So what I'll do at this point, I actually really like this, but I want to do some really big changes potentially. So what I'm going to do is I will actually grab this and you'll see over here, I've actually done it a few times. I select it and I duplicate it. That way, if I feel like, you know, I'm about to screw it up or something, I don't have to be like, no, all my hard work. You know, um, I think it's really a great feature that you can just duplicate a piece um, and something I always wished I could do beforehand. See, like, look, at that's not quite as powerful, I feel it's nice. See, it's good to test these things out, honestly. Um, mm, it's nice. I'm actually looking through the camera as well. I do like that. We'll just keep going with it. We'll ride. We'll let this ride. Just gotta let it ride sometimes. Um, a little bit of... It's really quite spooky. Um, and these pieces tend to get emotional as well. Like, it's almost like a feeling I'm riding. You know, it's like... I don't know how to explain it. But people are like, oh, what's your inspiration? And I'm, I'm just trying to achieve a feeling I perhaps have felt or have seen somewhere um, that I, I don't have a word for. I mean, if I had a word for it, um, I probably wouldn't even need to draw these pictures, right? Um, I just want to express something that is unexpressible, which I think is like, you know, I, obviously that sounds a little, um, <laughs> it's one of those artsy things where you're like, yeah. Bro, keep telling me how I want to express the unexpressible, <laughs> but but it's true. There's like a certain level of like you want to make something that no one's made real before real. And look at even here, I do want to take these little scratches out, but they're also nice. They're beautiful. They're like a little. It's like a ghost of what used to be there. Like you know, this piece has changed so much already from the beginning, and I, I just want to keep adding to it basically. And this is at the stage where I'm like, you know, a big part of this um, is learning when to call it basically. Um, and I have such a hard time with that. Like, I just want to add and add and add and make it and refine it. But, like, some of these pieces are just so nice when they're simple. You know, like, this piece is all, oh, boy. See, it's, like, it's so hard. You're, like, gaining these great features as well as these, like, beautiful brush strokes. But there does come a point where it just becomes, like, overbearing and, like, kind of annoying. And, like, it, it may screw up how it looks. Um, but I don't think we're there yet. I think we're onto something really good with this piece, honestly. I'm actually really pleased with this. Um, I don't know if I want to make it, it's very mysterious right now. The face has no, very little definition. But if I can just do a little bit, like right there, that might be nice. It's pretty awful. <laughs> but like in a positive way, in the way I'm looking for, for the most part. Um, I do want to add a little bit more viscera coming down here. But I love the quality of this right now. I love the feeling I'm getting. I'm getting feelings, uh, I'm getting disturbing feelings. I'm getting a feeling of like malice, uh, but of also like this is was supposed to just be like the lining of the inside of the uh, of the figure is like the hole for a face, but it's become this kind of like horrific uh, smile or something like that. Uh, yeah, so that's where that's where I'm at right now. Damn, this is good. This is a good one. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this. You know, it's funny um, when I first started recording these videos. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to capture the same feelings that I'm, you know, expressing as I draw these, like, you know, without talking to anybody and without having a live um, audience, I guess, at some level. But I'm definitely able to, which is nice. Um, so I definitely want to be doing more of these videos. This is great. It's also nice for me to talk through it, if I'm being honest. Um, 
So yeah, I want to do more of these. I think this is good. Man, I, I don't really want to do too much more. Um, it would be nice to add a little bit of like, like I don't know, particulates. Just like, mm, it does take away from it though. The negative space, it's also a balance of like trying to figure out if negative space is working for you or not. I almost want to like just make this a little bit bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to merge all these down. And then I'm going to do one more copy. And look, even from there, it's not really a huge difference, but you can see, oh, I do love these little textures here and here. Um, we're going to duplicate this one more time. And then I'm going to just try to make it, I'm just going to adjust the sizing a little bit because I feel like it would look so good right there. Yeah, that does look quite nice. Um, so let's give that a shot. Let's add some white. We'll do the turpentine. We'll just blast this whole area. It doesn't even have to be like, yeah, look at that. Just, just make it crazy, right? This is supposed to be a painting. I do want to do more actual paintings like this, which is which would be a lot of fun. But all right, let's see. We get this black right here. Oh, and if anyone's curious about the colors I'm using, this is the red I use. It's like just over here in this corner. I use it almost all the time. As you can see, it's just like three variants. I use a more blue uh a red black sometimes i'll use like a blue black over here um but it really depends it does make a slight difference color theory does you know even with these three colors it makes a big difference and for the white it's just kind of a more like turquoise white um a little cooler so i do like usually either you know obviously it's gonna be either warm or cool right so it's like either a warm black and a warm red or a um warm red and a cold black i don't usually change the red but i change the black around um I don't change the red or the white. The black usually is the color that changes. Um, all right, yeah, that's that, man. I think that's looking really good. I'm going to actually just add a little bit more black over here just to add some shading. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. <laughs> that's good. Um, that's that. And then we'll do this and then this. And then anything else? I could add some I, – I, sometimes I like to add some fun stuff to the, to the you know, the equation. That's not very fun. Although – Man, we're just hitting all the all the different ideas today. Let's get rid of that. I just want to see something really quickly. Because if we can get... Oh, that might be really cool, actually. If we can do like a big shadow in the background, that might be what I'm looking for. That might be it. I don't know. You know what we can try and do, actually? So it just doesn't look right because the shadow isn't exactly correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy. We're going to paste.